Today we're going to be talking about why Olympus Dow price is dropping. We're going to be talking about what can happen so they can fix the project. The project is currently in a free fall. Looks like it is failing. Is it over? It may be, but I actually think the project can be fixed. And I'm going to share with you what I think they need to do to be able to fix the project. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cover four reasons why I believe the project is failing. And then I'll let you know what I think they can do to improve the project and make it better. Also, I'm going to give you a tip about some other DAOs a little bit later in the video as well. Something to think about if you're looking to invest in other DAOs outside of Olympus. Now, nothing in this video is financial advice. These are simply my observations. Please take this information, do your own research, think it over, critically think for yourself about what I'm saying. And then if you have any other comments or ideas, put them down in the comments. Let's have a discussion. But again, this is not financial advice. The first reason that I believe Olympus DAO is failing is because their intended purpose is really not that clear to the community. The The project says at its core that it's a, the goal is to be the decentralized reserve currency. So what is a reserve currency? A reserve currency is designed to give stability to a financial market. They go on to say Olympus is building a community-owned decentralized financial infrastructure to bring more stability and transparency for the world. Again, the keyword here is stability. I love what this project is trying to achieve, and I actually think it can still be achieved long term, the fundamental project. The problem is a lot of people are treating this project like it's some sort of crazy moonshot. And I understand the APY was crazy high. The people who got in early, when you talk about, you know, multi hundred thousand percent APY or tens of thousands, whatever it was in the early days, the people who were earning that percentage and the price went up. They made a fortune, probably their biggest win in all of crypto, unless they were an early Bitcoin investor. I mean, that was that was an enormous win right there. So a lot of people are, were looking at this project like it was going to somehow just take off and go to the moon. So you have to ask yourself, what was the goal of the project? The goal of the project is to be backed by one dollar in die and to be a decentralized reserve currency. So they don't have a, a maximum price. The price can sell above a dollar, but that's a premium. Now, I, I know a lot of people talk about the treasury value, and we'll get into that in a moment. But it's not been clear enough inside of the Telegram groups, inside of the uh, Discord. It's not clear enough that this project is intended to be a reserve currency asset. That is the goal first and foremost. And people don't even understand what a reserve currency asset is. Now, admittedly, it is in the white paper. They do say that in the white paper. It's part of the reason I sold when I sold back in November. This is the video where I announced that I was going to be selling. So it's first and foremost, the intended purpose is not clear. The second reason I believe the project is failing is because the inflation is entirely too high. If you read through the white paper, they explain that the high inflation in the early days helps to create attract attention and to create adoption. Give the Olympus team credit for doing something innovative and being one of the first teams to do this. They probably did not realize how much attention would be created. They didn't realize how this would affect price long term. There was really no way to be able to predict that, especially because they were one of the first projects. Now, when you see a new DAO and they have these crazy high APYs, you just need to understand something sketchy is going on because now we know what this does to price. It caused it to spike really hard. It did it. The high APY did attract attention. But the problem is it attract the wrong type of attention as well. If, if you're looking for some sort of a reserve currency asset, think about stablecoin. Ideally, they were creating something that should maintain buying power where the U.S. dollar does not. The U.S. dollar gets inflated over time. They were trying for you to be able to have something you could own and you could hold. You could understand that it would be at least worth a dollar. But because of the treasury mechanisms and how they own the liquidity and how the treasury can earn yields relatively safely, the idea was that over time, the value of your dollars would be able to maintain the purchasing power. This is such a neat concept. But the type of investor that really wants to have an investment that's going to maintain its purchasing power, that's going to be a true decentralized reserve currency, that type of investor is far different than those of us who are looking for high risk, high returns. The high risk, high return crowd it doesn't want a slow investment. The high risk, high return crowd doesn't want 10%, 20% a year. They're looking for 
hundreds of percent if they can get it, thousands of percent in the short term, and they're oftentimes in and out of projects very, very quickly, which is why you end up seeing a price chart that looks a little bit like this. By the way, a lot of times talk, people talk about all, uh, all-time highs and they talk about Olympus. I want to say this real quick. Right here, literally somebody posted, next bull market, it will break $1,200 in support. I don't know where he sees that support. I think he means resistance, but that was on the 26th. This isn't a complex chart, but you can see how much volume is here when it got to close to all-time highs at $1,200, $1,300. Look over here. There was no volume. It needs, it's going to need exponentially more volume created to hit that price again because the supply is so much higher. Tokens are getting printed daily at, at a, an enormous, an enormous rate. So the first thing, the intended purpose has not been cleared. That's first and foremost. Second of all, the high inflation, that's the second reason this project is failing. The inflation was entirely too high from the start. And in my opinion, it's still entirely too high because high inflation always causes price to go down. And a lot of investors, even in crypto, don't quite understand that. But you understand when there's high inflation, it basically means that if price stays stable and you get, uh, you know, this project had tens of thousands of percent APY at one point, which is several hundred percent APR, which means you're making multiple single digits per day. If you're making, say, 5% a day on your investment six, and, and you go two, three, four days, if you're a small investor, you're willing to hold that because you want that to grow somewhere. But if you are a whale and you're sitting on hundreds of thousands of dollars or even a million dollars, 5% in a single day is significant. And you are desperately worried about losing that hundreds of thousands of dollars if the price drops. So whales typically start to sell first. By the way, a key to being a successful crypto investor is think like a whale, even with a small amount. But that's another video for another day. So whales are going to start selling 5% a day. Heck, after 10 days, they've made 50% on their hundreds of thousands. They're going to start selling. They are not going to hold and compound indefinitely because they know that someone is going to eventually sell and they don't want to be stuck holding the bag, particularly if they have a large amount of USD value at stake. So the third reason Olympus has failed is partially because of what I'm explaining here, and that is that 3.3 isn't working. Now, if you don't know what 3.3 is, let me explain it this way. So the idea behind 3.3 was basically represents staking and bonding. If you're staking and bonding and you're not selling, and if everybody's staking and bonding, then the price is going to stay up. Even though the high inflation creates a tremendous amount of sell pressure, if everybody staked, everybody bonded, and nobody sold, then of course the price would stay up and, and everybody would make money. But one way to think about it is what they call the prisoner's dilemma. So imagine here there's a lawyer, he's a prosecutor, and there's you and somebody else, and you've both committed a crime. Now there's two scenarios I'm going to play out here and I explain why 3-3 isn't working. It can work, and it does work in some scenarios, but it's not working with Olympus DAO and it's not working with most of the DAOs. And this is part of the reason why. So let's just say you committed some sort of horrible crime and you're looking at, you know, 20 years in jail. Think about 20 years being locked up in prison. You and you have a co-conspirator or somebody else who was with you. You both committed a crime. You both were doing the same thing. You're both charged with the same crime and you're both looking at 20 years in jail. Now, they don't have any hard evidence. So without a confession you're probably going to be okay. Let's say the lawyer here says, uh, he comes to you and he says, listen, if you tell your buddy, you're not going to have to do any jail time, but he's going to get life in prison. In other words, more than 20 years. You can walk away scot-free. You don't got to do 20 years. You just got to tell your buddy. Maybe you're not a snitch, but you start thinking to yourself, is my partner a snitch? If you both kept your mouth shut, you might get off scot-free. If you both did what was best for the group, you might not even get in trouble. They don't have any evidence, but you're sitting here thinking, is my co-conspirator who I can't see, they've got us separated. Is he also going to keep his mouth shut or is he going to rat me out? And then if there's any doubt in your mind that you're going to get ratted out, the first thing you think about is, well, I need to act first because I need to act before he acts. And by the way, he or she is over here thinking, I need to act before the se they act. And then all of a sudden, you're both racing to tell the lawyer your side of the story and, you know, rat out the other person. This is what happens in investing. This is what happened in game theory. The idea is if everybody does what they're supposed to do in Olympus Dow, the price never drops. Everybody gets all the rebases. 
and you end up making a fortune. With the high inflation rate, it creates the same sort of scenario with the stiff penalty if price drops because the price can drop really fast because of the inflation. There's so much more supply being on the market. So now let's look at another scenario where 3-3 might work. And that is, let's just say, you know, you got some petty crime. You're going to go to jail for, I don't know, a month. And your, your partner would go to jail for a month. But if you keep your mouth shut, nothing's going to happen. And if one of you talks, they say, hey, listen, if you talk, you're going to definitely go to jail. But, you know, it's only going to be a week. If you don't talk, you're, you're both probably going to go to jail for two weeks is what you're thinking. But if one of you rats the other one out, then the one who, you know, rats out, he's going to go to jail for a week. The other one may go to jail for a month. In other words, the risk reward isn't so strong. When the risk reward isn't so like the, the risk isn't really high, the reward's not really high, the, the prison dilemma works a lot better. The inflation, again, it comes back to the inflation, is part of the problem. If the inflation was far lower, far lower, under 100%, maybe maybe 50%, maybe 80%, maybe 40%, then there wouldn't be as much sell pressure. People wouldn't necessarily feel like they were at risk, and the prisoner dilemma staying stake, the 3-3, might actually work out a lot better. Again, when Olympus started, they didn't necessarily know how this would work out, but now we're actually seeing it in real time. And part of the problem that they have now type of investor they attracted with a high APY, unknowingly, they keep wanting the high APY. People don't understand when you increase a rate of return, then what you end up doing is increasing sell pressure. So everybody thinks the answer initially is they need to increase the APY. They need to increase the APY. You see this over and over again in crypto. The problem is they need to increase rewards. It's why competitors to Olympus will come out with much higher APYs and the few competitors that come out with really low APYs, I'm not vouching for those, but they get a lot of hate from the community. A lot of people are like, oh, the APY is too low. And, and people don't understand that the interest rate, the high APY ends up being a big part of the problem because it's too high. And therefore, the price goes down far faster than you can compound to keep up with it, at least in any reasonable amount of time. Nobody's trying to really hold Olympus for years and years at this point. The fourth reason that I believe the project is failing is right here. The backing is not clear. It looks like $56 per token. It looks like the price can't go below $56. But with the high APY, I literally just saw a YouTuber that that is a very large YouTuber talking about Olympus. And he said the problem is they keep moving the APY. They keep moving the goalpost. And if it just stayed stagnant, then you know people would have faith in the project and that sort of thing. And I thought to myself, how do you get a following that large and you don't understand supply and demand? Let me show you something. If the backing per token is $56 and there's only one token that's backed, and that, that meaning there's only one, the whole supply is just one token. And I'm trying to make this simple. Let's come back over here to Microsoft. So if you have one ohm token, and that one token is backed by $56. And then the APY, you know, is so high that it, incre it creates two ohm tokens. The treasury doesn't go up. So the backing is still $56 per token. But what happens when you create more tokens? Again, you create more tokens faster than the treasury. going. The treasury is not going to grow at 1,000, 5,000, 10,000% APY. What happens when you increase tokens like this? So if you have two ohm tokens and the treasury doesn't go up, but you've doubled the ohm tokens, then the backing per token is going to go down. And in this case, it would get cut in half if you go from one tokens to two tokens. If you have 100 tokens and the treasury price doesn't go up and they're backed by $56, and you increase the total token supply by 10%, then the backing is gonna go down by 10% because that treasury, that backing has to get spread among all of the tokens in supply. So the backing over time will go down. Now the purpose of the backing is if there was a sudden drop in price, if the price dropped significantly, a, a massive dump. What is supposed to happen is that there's supposed to be a mechanism in place where you can at least get this $56 Per token. That's what's supposed to happen. Again, if there's a price drop because the rebases happen every few hours. So if there's a price drop within those hours that say it goes down to $55, then you're supposed to be able, there's supposed to be a mechanism in place where you can get $56 per token. Now, this goes into the other problem. I don't know what that mechanism is. We've only seen one project do that. 
and that mechanism didn't kick in. It was basically they were saying they had to vote for it and all this nonsense. No, this mechanism needs to happen quickly and immediately if that were to happen. Here's what we know about Olympus and all dials, or at least Olympus particularly. The white paper says, essentially, they're going to keep increasing the token supply. There's going to be an APY in place. And definitely, the only time that, the, that they're going to burn tokens is when if the price drops below $1 per backing. Well, as long as there's a high APY in a thousand plus percent, several hundred percent, it's pretty safe to say that ultimately the price will get very close to a dollar per token at some point, as long as the APY stays that high. There is an opportunity to be able to fix this. I, I, again, overall, I'm a fan of the project. And I actually think what's gonna happen is long-term, the APY is gonna continue to drop. I believe that with everything in me. Right now, the APY is 1600%. has already come down a lot. I think it's gonna continue to drop. It needs to drop. What they're doing, what Olympus is doing is incredible. If you stop and think about it, they own all of their liquidity. So they're literally making millions of dollars on their liquidity. In fact, I'll prove it to you if you don't know this. Let's look at their 24-hour their volume right here. Is this accurate? Let's go do a quick refresh. Okay, their 24-hour volume is 20 million dollars in volume, meaning buys and sells. On Uniswap, they get point. 3% of the, those fees if they own 100% of the liquidity of the LP tokens. And they own, all, at this very moment, 99.5% of all of the liquidity on Ohm Dai. So let's just take a look for a moment. On, if they had $20 million of volume and they get 0.3% of that, let's take a quick look. 20 million times 0.3%. That's $60,000 a day that goes to the treasury times 365 days. That's $21 million, almost $22 million a year, a year. The risk-free treasury assets right now is $227 million. So that's roughly 10% a year. Now, if your dollars in your pocket bought 10%. Right now they lose somewhere between 3 to 5% or more a year of their buying power. Meaning they purchase 3% less every single year. Imagine if the dollars in your bank account or in your wallet actually bought 10% more every single year. That's the goal of Olympus to be able to have some sort of a, a, a currency, reserve currency that is going to go up over time. The purchasing power is going to increase over time. That is incredible. In order for this project to get to that point, they're going to have to make some changes. The first change is they need to start making much better clear communication with the intended purpose of becoming a reserve currency asset. Again, it's on the front page of the website. It's in the white paper. They need, But they need to be doing some AMAs on Discord or Telegram. They need to be actively communicating with the team what the goal of the project is. Even when price was going up, they could have said, hey, guys, just know the price is sky high right now. This is a huge premium. You know, just understand we expect a strong pullback because the team did expect a strong pullback. If not, then they don't need to be running the project. If, if an amateur YouTuber like myself understood why there could be a significant pullback, so much so that I sold my tokens when people told me I was stupid. So if I could recognize it, then the team has to recognize it. And if not, they don't need to be managing this project. So the first thing is clear communication, letting them know what the goal of the project is, giving them some some sort of expectations on, hey, you know, just be careful. You know, this is risky. At the end of the day, we're backed, but supply is growing. That means backing per token will go down over time. And I've had people try to argue with me that, you know, the backing per token thing was like, like it was some sort of solid sort of thing and it was going to continue to increase over time. The backing per token is not likely to increase over time. The more time passes, the harder it is because there's more and more tokens being minted all of the time every few hours because of that high APY. The second thing is they really need to, to save the project. They need to lower the inflation. They need to do it quickly. I, I think they need to get down to 100% APY or less, truly. Again, different type of investor than who in, invested in this project initially. But it, having a project that could produce a 10 to 15 to 20% APY, which they could do based on not just what they're getting from the LP tokens, but also what they're generating uh, through through like their bonds as a service and that sort of thing, the Olympus Pro, 
All those things could really help support the treasury long term. Plus, a par portion of the treasury they're using for other DeFi projects as well that can help boost that. So I believe it's reasonable to have some sort of APY that's probably going to be slightly higher than 10%, especially with continued adoption. More people wanting to own the token, be a part of the, the whole process. Again, the great thing about their $20 million that they earned last year is not going to be diluted by more people coming into the project because more people coming into the project basically end up locking up more liquidity pairs and more people in the project increase volume transactional volume on the contract and of course there's fees paid on every transaction buys and sells so it doesn't necessarily dilute it that more people are coming in unlike something like a yield farm for example those apys aren't sustainable because they get diluted over time the third and i think this is a very important uh change to make to be able to really give faith to the community at whole. A lot of faith has been lost because communication wasn't there, because uh, truly a lot of people didn't understand the effects of the high APY on the overall price. But I think one of the things that has to happen, in my opinion, is they need some sort of redemption option available. Someone in one of my YouTube comments said this, and I thought that's a great idea. They need some sort of redemption option here where literally, no matter the price, you can say, hey, I want to redeem my own right now for $56, even though the price is $61. And by the way, when the price goes down to $55, I can still click this button and redeem my own. Now, that would involve them pulling the funds from the treasury and that sort of thing. But if the funds are there, then that would be awesome to be able to provide faith is, hey, your funds are backed. You don't have to wait for us to do something. You don't have to wait for us to buy back anything. Anytime you want to get you know your funds back, you can do it. And by the way, there's never going to be a bank run. If they have this backing by per ohm, now if it's based on this number, there's a problem. But if it's based on the risk-free value asset, this is a true backing really for a treasury, for a, a reserve currency asset. Whatever, whatever, I would have to do the math, but if this is the real number, then it's going to always be there in just about any market condition because these are all stable coins. So it should always be there. So that would be cool to add some sort of button to make it clear that at any point in time you want, you can redeem directly out of the treasury the backing per ohm token. And I think that would add a lot of faith for people who are, are nervous about these projects in general. I want to say this. I want to wrap up with this. There's very rarely been a project that I thought had better long-term financial potential. Like I think what Olympus is trying to do, if they can create a truly decentralized reserve currency asset, what that could do for the world of finance would be extraordinary. I mean, truly extraordinary. Think about this. Banks make money by lending. The way banks make money is they make money by loaning their money out. And when they loan their money out, they got to charge you interest. But imagine if somehow a financial system, or in this case, a DAO, made money just because they held the asset in a liquidity pool and they earned the fees off that liquidity. So the asset is always there. The asset always has a stable value. The asset is backed 100% all the time by solid treasury. And that asset is earning funds over time. That's truly spectacular if you stop and think about it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments about what I've said today. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to see, do you think the DAOs are going to be successful? Do you think they're not going to be successful? Let me know your thoughts in the comment. I in the comments. I appreciate you watching. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you like this video and you like hearing these sorts of discussions on projects, do me a favor and smash that like button. And if you love earning passive income with cryptocurrency, Go down into the description and subscribe to our Crypto Passive Profits newsletter. Decentralized cryptocurrency equals freedom. This is Crypto Wealth. I'm out.